Welcome back, everyone. In today's episode, we're going to walk through two different ways you can solve this OSINT geolocation challenge and find where this photo was taken. With the first approach, we're going to try to incorporate as many relevant clues as possible, and the second method is going to be a bit of a shortcut. All right, so let's get started. If we look at the text of the tweet, this appears to be a small town where this individual is from. This makes sense given the horse and buggy here at the intersection. You don't generally see this in a bigger city with heavier traffic. The vehicles are driving on the right side of the road. We can see these Ford and Buick emblems here on the vehicles. This looks like it's a license plate from North America. These two signs here are in English. This sign right here looks like it might say Times, but it's not completely clear. We have these two signs that say 7th and 8th Street. A couple of signs here on the right that I can't quite make out, but there's a distinctive blue logo here. This is some sort of a rooftop or a banner with red, white, and blue colors. The red and white stripes right here indicate this could be an American flag. If we shift focus to the background for a moment, we can see this illuminated sign right here is likely the price per gallon at a gas station, and right here we can just barely see this small piece of a white and blue sign. If we look closely, we can see this loop of the cursive letter F from the iconic Ford logo, which could mean there's a Ford dealership there. At this point, we can confidently say we're somewhere in the United States. Okay, so we've identified some potentially helpful clues from the photo, but where do we go from here? There are too many 7th and 8th streets in the U.S. to bring up one at a time using Google Street View. The same idea applies to Ford dealerships. That would be an extremely long list to go through manually. Let's see what we can find out about the individual who posted the photo and try to narrow this down a bit. Looking through his Twitter profile, we can see his name is Jeremiah and he has this URL in his bio. We could keep looking through his profile to see if we can find his full name, but at this point, let's make an educated guess that he's somehow affiliated with the company in the URL. If we do a quick Google search of LinkedIn using the site operator, with the keywords Jeremiah and the name of the company in the URL, we can find his profile here. As a quick confirmation, we can see the banner and the profile photos are a match. Looking through his work history, none of these locations appear to be small towns, with the exception of 29 Palms, California, but it looks like he was only stationed there because of the military. After that, there's a two-year gap and then we have Irving, Texas. Irving has at least a quarter of a million people, which I wouldn't consider to be a small town, but he could be from another town that's outside of Irving. Here we have the name of his high school, but there isn't a location listed. A quick Google search shows multiple results, which means this may be a somewhat common name for a school. There are a couple of different ways to identify the correct one, but before we do that, let's try to fill in this two-year gap after his military service. It's fairly common for people to go back to their hometowns for at least a brief period of time when they're finished with the military. Going back to his Twitter account, we can see that he's been a guest on a podcast before. I searched for his name on Spotify using the mobile app to see if I could find an interview where he talks specifically about his background in more detail. I came across this one titled From Marine to Geek Squad to Red Team, a conversation with Jeremiah Rowe. Based on the title, this interview is likely Jeremiah's origin story. Perfect. That's exactly what we're looking for. There are two key pieces of information from this interview that are going to help us fill in the two-year gap on his LinkedIn. Let's listen to the first piece. But um, let me rewind. So I come out of the Marine Corps. Uh, so I went into the Marine Corps out of high school uh, right here from Texas, as I know you're from the area. Um, joined the Marine Corps, went for four years, got out came back home and was doing that sort of transitional thing where I'm like, I have no idea what I want to be when I grow up. And uh, so I start looking for work and I kind of, I, I, I get a job doing um, um, mall security for a bit and uh, obviously uh, loved it. Uh, Viewers can't see, but I'm kind of rolling my eyes there. Um, I, I, (laughs) <laughs> then transition from that into being a, a dock supervisor for UPS Freight, actually right out of Irving here. So Irving, Texas. Now let's skip to the second piece. Yeah, man, I used to hail right out, right, right outside of Plano over here. I went to Pesh. Pesh! Um, <laughs> so Plano, Plano East Senior High um, is where I got my, uh, where I finished off my senior year. Okay, so now we know he finished his last year of high school in Plano, Texas, joined the Marines, and then went back to Texas after the military and worked in security until joining UPS in 2009 in Irving, Texas. At this point, we've likely narrowed the location of the photo down to two possible locations, Plano, Texas, and wherever this Rochester high school is located. 
Going back to the photo, these two vehicles don't have front license plates. In the state of Texas, you're required to have two license plates, one on the front and one on the back. Now, these could just be out on a test drive from the Ford dealer right here, but this license plate on the Buick here isn't from Texas. After comparing it to a list of plates from the U.S., we can see it matches one of the standard designs for the state of Indiana, and the state of Indiana only requires one license plate on the back. That still doesn't necessarily mean this is somewhere in Indiana. This vehicle could be from out of state, but since there are multiple schools with the same name throughout the U.S., we can try Indiana as our starting point. If we look through a few of the results from our previous Google search, we can see there's a match in Rochester, Indiana, and Rochester is a smaller town. Perfect. Now, remember from the photo, we have this sign here with what looks like the word Times, and we also have the Ford sign. We can now do a search using the keywords Times, Rochester, and Indiana, or we could also try Ford, Dealership, Rochester, and Indiana. Let's try the Times option first. Alright, so it looks like it's a theater in Rochester, Indiana. Excellent. Let's go to Street View now and determine the exact location. There it is. We've got the left turn only here, the wait delayed signal sign here, the sign with the blue logo here, the American flag, and the rooftop with red, white, and blue. Okay, so now that we've solved this using a more detailed approach, I'm going to show you the second method. If we scroll towards the bottom of his LinkedIn, we can see there's a second reference to his high school that says Core 40 Honors. This sounds like it could be something that would be unique to a specific state. If we search for Core 40 Honors, we can see results for the state of Indiana, and now we can identify the correct location of the school. We can then search for Times, Rochester, and Indiana to find the location in the photo. All right, so that's it for this episode. If you enjoy this type of content, you can check out my other videos and subscribe to the channel for future notifications. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.